But thank you so much, uh, Katie and Yuri, for um, an incredible, insightful conversation about um, community and your experience. I think that this is a great case study of an early stage community being built here in San Francisco, the challenges that we're facing and also the successes that we're facing. So I'm very happy to be sharing some of our experiences um, here in the city. Um, um, my name is Enrique. I'm the lead of uh, communities here in San Francisco, but my background is in sociology. So I really appreciate uh, your, your, your background story on, on, on history and how useful th that can be for, for connecting those dots um, that you mentioned, Katie. Um, also the idea of curiosity and, and, and finding patterns and, and asking good questions and, and being interested and observant on how um, um, dynamics are being played and how you insert yourself nicely into those, being strategic um, into your connections. So uh, please, if you have any questions while I'm talking, please just raise your hand. I love being interrupted um, all the time. Um, so I, I come from sociology. Uh, I joined Fripic as a researcher, uh, but very soon uh, my team realized that I was very good talking to people and building relationships and selling a brand in a very gentle, smart, uh, strategic way, not just in your face, you should use Fripic. Um, so I'm very grateful that I, I was able to transition in my short time in Fripic, a year and a half, going from research into marketing into now uh, being the community lead. Um, and using all my background and curiosities um, and experiences um, to, to, to be part of this team. So if you're not aware, Fripic uh, transitioned from being a stock uh, visual asset company to being an AI suite for creatives. Very different user bases. Um, when we decided uh, in 2022 to move into the AI world, um, we vastly realized that a big part of that stage was to transfer users that were very loyal and were familiar with the Fripic product into a whole new different uh, world of AI that was very unknown, very intimidating, especially for creatives, because our tool faces creatives directly and because creatives, for very good reasons, have a lot of anxieties on how AI and how technology is being integrated into the work, um, it was uh, Fripic's job to understand those fears and address them as, as best as we could through our products, through our communities, through our events. Fripic is an, is an old company. We've been around for over 13 years, I believe. Um, uh, in the US, we've been here for about two years, two years and a half, I believe. Uh, this is the first event that we're hosting in our new office. I don't know if you're familiar, but uh, we moved about a week and a half ago uh, from our mo smaller space to this much larger which is, I think, a reflection of how beautiful the community is growing and how impactful we're seeing these events to be for, for um, communicating our ideas and our products. This is gonna be our official event space. Now we have an office in the back, and now it's not just everything mingling and everything overlapping. Um, so we're very grateful for that. Um, so I'm just gonna tell you a little bit on our strategies and how we tend to connect uh, with our community and how we're building it. Again, it's an early community. Uh, I think Katie talked about their early, the, the, egg, the chicken and the egg. Uh, you, build it and you build it and they'll come or you wanna be more strategic. I think we went with you build it and they'll show up. But we're very grateful that, that thanks to a solid product that we have, we were able to build uh, interesting events with some cool people and some cool profiles that were interesting um, and people started showing up. Uh, people like th that are here tonight. Um, and once we started seeing that reaction, we realized that the community in person was very important, uh, especially in San Francisco where, where connection is spare and where creativity, uh, it's a root of the city and a, and a root of, of the culture of that, that's around us. Uh, but uh, other than in-person events, we, we also host uh, a very strong Discord community. We have an in-suite community in, in our uh, AI suite, social media, of course, and events. Uh, events are the most fulfilling to me, are the, the ones that bring me the most joy. But we're going to start uh, first with Discord. Um, in the last six months, uh, we've seen a lot of those interactions that Katie talked about, where the community is answering each other's questions. and. Our role as administrators and as leads of the community is, has been diminishing and is taking 
a backseat role and a more observant role, um, always uh, uh, knocking on doors and, and being smart and, and how we interact with them. But uh, it's been beautiful to see how, how our community has grown 50% um, in the last six months by very intentional um, posts and activations. I was talking to someone about activations earlier today. Uh, but see, seeing, seeing how the how those things are effective in, in, in engaging online communities. We also have an in-suite community. Uh, we are uh, an AI suite where uh, users are able to generate uh, images and videos uh, using different models, and they're able to share them within our suite and have their own profile and post. Um, and you can interact with them, you can like them, you can follow them. Uh, and that's also very strong. But between those two worlds, we have what we call the AI partners, free pick AI partners. Um, it's also important to mention that Discord is very important for, for our community to feel special and to feel seen. So when we have launches, they mostly go out first on Discord, letting them know what's coming, and they have a little insight on, on what's coming. And that makes them feel very, as, as part of the team, uh, as, as one, of, one of us, and, and they're able to to also give us some feedback on, on what we're, they're expecting to see. Uh, and listening to that has been very, very important for us to understand uh, our path and grow on that. But uh, when we talk about AR partners, they're uh, top creators around the, the world that, that have an interest in using Fripping and have experience, have experience using our platform and are comfortable navigating it. Um, our AI partners community has been growing exponentially in the last six months as well uh, by the visibility that Fripping is getting nationally. We're just, before the event started, we were on the back watching our CEO talk in NBC Live and in national TV, and that was, it's, it's a beautiful thing uh, to see um, uh, how our growth, and that's all thanks to AI partners and our users and creators that are using our tool. Um, AR partners get VIP access to our beta tools, so things that are not released yet, they get to play with it. Uh, we get to hear their feedback and their comments also on Discord in a private channel where they get to discuss about it. We're just like snooping and like putting our ear to the wall to see what they're saying and how we can improve it. Um, they also get a huge benefit by networking with each other. Uh, creatives love other creatives. Um, and it's important to make those spaces accessible to them and, 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 and easy, easily accessible. Um, we also uh, like to feature their skills in, into our platforms and in events. Um, this is an example of Jared Liu, a creative out of New York um, that uses many platforms, but one of his top favorites is uh, Freepik. He was here earlier this year giving an in-person workshop to, to some creators on how on his workflow and how he uses the free big tools to generate uh, his own content. And sharing uh, skills, sharing different workflows is also uh, a, beautiful, a beautiful way of sharing knowledge um, and including others into your creative mind. Um, and yeah. So now in-person events. Um, we've been here in San Francisco for about two years. In those two years, we have held about 32 events with 55 speakers and over 1,200 attendees. In our very small office uh, in the past, that got very hot and very loud and also very cold during the winter. Uh, it was beautiful. It hosted a lot of beautiful things and, and beautiful connections, so we're very grateful for that. Um, we hosted about an average two events per month of different types because Freepik is a tool for creatives of all types. Uh, uh, we have realized that it's important to create events for designers, for influencers, for investors, for uh, early career designers, for universities, uh, and that just opens the door to many types of events that, that, that we can host. Um, we do demos, we work tomorrow, I'm going to the Swiss Embassy because they're bringing some journalists to learn more about how they're integrating AI into their workflow. So I, 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 I'm lucky that I'm going to be able to show them how to use Fripik into, in, in, into journalism and how they work with it. Uh, collaborations like this one, um, different panels with different experts um, of the industry. We do hackathons at universities, not three-day hackathons. I think that's just 
insane, and I don't know how you'll do it, but a few hours, maybe a full day, uh, I think that's good enough for us. Um, and just social meetups, just spaces for, for people to connect, and, and not just around Fripig, but around creativity. Uh, if you have a good product and you, may, you bring people together, uh, you don't really have to sell that product that hard to them. Uh, you just have to put it in front of them, and if they like it, and if you're doing a good job, they'll pick it up by themselves. Um, and I think that's the best compliment that we can take from, from our users. We were very early. Our first office started because we wanted the billboard on top. So we wanted to put a big billboard of Fritbig um, on top. But part of the deal was you can get the billboard if you rent the office on the bottom. We're like, OK, we'll just get the office. It was a bit of an accident. Uh, but the billboard really didn't do much for us. It was the office that, that we accidentally rented at the bottom that started giving us a lot more juice and is starting inspiring us a little bit more. Um, so we said, let's stop with the billboards. Let's just focus on events and, and be more intentional about who we talk to, who we invite. Um, and yeah. Uh, Upscale Conf. Was, I think it's a beautiful example of, of, of the success that Fripic and the community that it's building is having in, in, in San Francisco and in the US. Uh, Upscale Conf happened in March, May, in May this year, I believe. Uh, it was a two-day conference with over 700 people going from creative designers, artists, uh, industry leaders. We have amazing speakers. Uh, the turnaround was beautiful. Uh, we, we had our first upscale in Malaga, Spain, where our headquarters are last year. And it was a good turnout, so the company said, why don't we just do that in San Francisco, where we have another office, and where is the AI and creative hub of the world. We did it. It was beautiful. We had a great quote from Amelia Nash from Pre Magazine, creativity is evolving with technology, but creativity itself is still deeply human and deeply uh, communal. Um, and that was the highlight of, of the whole event. It was not just showing our demos and telling people how to use our tools and the best, the best outputs you can generate with each model. It was, the highlight was people connecting with other people. Um, and I think everyone from the Freepik team can agree that that was just not un unexpected. We were hoping for that, but it was a beautiful surprise that we got. Uh, and a lot of feedback that we got was just like the workshops, the, the, the people that, that, that showed up, the connections that we were able to make was what, what, what made the event um, a highlight for a lot of people. Um, in, this, in a similar vein, Paula Viva is our head of marketing in the US. She's unfortunately not here tonight. Uh, she's in her headquarters in Spain. But she said somewhere, I just asked ChatGPT for some quotes, and Paolo Vivas, our head of marketing, a quote popped up, and I was like, oh, this is perfect. She said, without community, you don't have a tool. With, that, with the creative behind, behind it, your tool means nothing. Um, I think this speaks to the stigma that AI is carrying in the creative spaces. Uh, this, this idea that AI is humanizing uh, uh, art and creativity. A AI is changing a lot of industries very, very fast, and there's not a lot of question on how the humanizing that aspect is for people that are working in stats and in science, that are, their benefit is instant, um, and there's not a lot of social threat, social threatening uh, to, to their livelihoods or to their careers or to their creativity. I think creativity is in a, in a very weird position with the AI, and, and I think we have to navigate it very carefully in how we present it. And, and, and the alliances that you're making with, with the community uh, to not lean into this dehumanization aspect of it, but having this in-person in events and humanizing the, the, the tools that, that humans are creating um, and, and are using it to be even more creative in different ways. Um, yeah. So uh, what's next? This is our first event uh, in this office. We're hoping to uh, continue growing and continue having a stronger presence in San Francisco. Uh, with you all here, we hope to see familiar faces. I already see some faces that I've seen before. Uh, we have an event coming up at the end of the month with Rachel, who is the, the, the host of Creative Mornings. Um, just, just positioning ourselves in places where uh, where we want to be and with the people that, that we want to be with uh, and play nice and, and reminding creatives that, that AI is uh, 
just an extra tool for the human creativity as not here to threaten, uh, but to um, make the work a little bit easier or different or faster. But we're happy to have those conversations as well because those fears are very real and those anxieties are very real and, and we need to have those conversations. Um, so that's a little bit what Freepik is doing on the community side. I know it's quick, it was just a quick case study. I'm very happy to talk to anyone who has any questions about what we're doing and the future and the vision that we have for Freepik in San Francisco and beyond. Um, so yeah, very grateful for you all to be here and break the space with us.